How does page load get called? Right? It's a similar kind of, kind of miracle. The page doesn't know how it happened. It wasn't the page's job to fire that thing off. It was another kind of convention. The page framework handled it. So here, we, have, we can set up these routes. We see we say controller, action, and ID. We set these routes up to uh, template URIs or URLs and then route them to a particular controller and a particular action. So right now we've got controller slash action slash ID. This is not a regular expression. It's like a templating language. The things in curly braces are the, the segments. So we're saying slash home, slash about, slash, and then ID. And then at the bottom there where it says new controller, that's the default. So if I don't include slash about, I can see that action index is the default. If I don't include slash home, then the home controller, action pose. <laughs> you see, I'm paying attention. My goal is to have all pictures of Flickr be me just like Chuck Norris. Oh. I think I threw my back out there just, you know, just doing that. Now notice this ID. We didn't actually use that before. That's optional. It's actually marked in ASP.NET MVC2 as being optional. OK? Let's, let me see. Let's do this. Let's go back over to here, and let's put in uh, int ID. So I make, I'm just changing the method a little bit. And then we'll run it. I just typed in slash home, slash poop, slash five. So now we've added in a third aspect of things. We saw how controllers get invoked. This, there's a routing table that will kind of invoke that controller. We can dig into that in a little bit. We saw that there's a thing called an action invoker that will then call the method. Now there's a thing called model binding. And in this case, it actually took that other piece of the route data and coerced it into this integer. There's nothing in the route that says that it's an int. The only thing that lines up with the route was the fact that it's called ID. Does that make sense? So just by virtue of the fact that it was called ID and then it was in the correct segment inside of that route, it showed up here. Now my parameter has been passed. I didn't call request.querystring. I didn't call request.forms. I didn't dig around inside of HTTP looking for it. It just showed up here. Now, you might think that this is kind of, again, I use that term magic or a miracle a lot. But what's nice about ASP.NET MVC is that at every single level when these things happen, you have the opportunity to affect them. This is a really important thing to remember. If you don't like the way controllers get invoked, you can change it. If you don't like the way models are bound, you can change it. If you don't like the way routes are done, you can make your own kind of route. There is a, a component with the single responsibility of doing one of these things at every step of the way. So while it may seem like another kind of magic with like comparing it to web forms, you've got the complete source available, right? This is an open source thing, and you can look at the code. You can even rebuild MVC if you want to and step through it as you like. Let's try something a little more complicated. We'll go and let's go and make another another route. I can name them optionally. It doesn't really matter if they're named or not. Let's say, I'll just call this uh, by date. I'm just naming it. This, this can be whatever the name of the variable is. I'll call that by date. And I'm going to say, uh, say date time dot uh, minimum. That way we can tell. And I'll come over here. Date time by date. So 
So there's a slightly more complex type. And you notice that that date needed to be in a culture invariant format. I didn't use the kind of American month, day, year thing. I used the standard non-culture specific year, month, day. Of course, I could have complete control over that. If I hadn't included that, that could come back minimum. So you can start getting a sense about how you can map routes to a particular method and how uh, we do a lot of work for you. Now, things get interesting, and here we'll get a little bit more advanced, if you want to do things that are tricky. So I've got this application out there on the web called Nerd Dinner that you can download for free. And when you click on a dinner, I wanted to have this kind of smaller URL that would say slash ID. Now I could go, it used to be slash dinners slash details slash 283. I could call it uh, pretty route, say. Go back down here. I could do this. Right? Why might this be a problem? Why might not this be a good idea? Well, it's because this is what's called a very greedy route. Because I'm saying ID, that'll match anything. So if I said slash home, home's going to get passed in there. It, this, this route wants too much. Routes are managed in order. So by putting this route first, I'm going to have it grab everything. And because I made it so small, curly brace ID, uh, it's going to just match anything. The first slash home, it's gone. Now, if I put it at the end, it's never going to get called because the first route has those defaults. So routing, even with just two routes like this, can get really, really interesting and really complicated fast. Let me show you a little thing that Phil Hack, who is the program manager for ASP.NET MVC, built. You can download this route uh, debugger from his site. He made a bunch of routes here, the foo bar route and all these different kinds of routes. Just a little bit more complicated. And then he added this line on line 24. He registers his routes, and the routes are just kind of a static table. And then he rewrites them for testing. And I thought this was really, really clever. He gets it all set up. He tells ASP.NET MVC what to do. And at the last possible second, he says, no, no, I'll handle everything. So he routes everything back to himself. And he gives you this. So now I can say things like slash, uh, slash foo slash four. And we can really get a visualization about how routing works. Because routing is kind of the, the unsung hero of what's going on in MVC. We just said slash foo, slash four. And it gets parsed away there in route data. It's it chopped up. The route data is a name value pair collection of everything that we know about that route. In this case, it's pulled it all from the URI. And then he looks at the route table and shows you what matches and in what order. So you can see that even though it matches